Okay everyone, for this particular module and lecture we're going to be going over teams and committees, um, giving you a, a brief overview of both um, and talking about some advantages and different uh, disadvantages um, to using teams and committees, particularly within a healthcare setting. So the first thing as I uh, bring this slide up that I want to make sure to go over um, and make sure to point out is that all departments, particularly within a healthcare facility, um, and I'm sure this is true um, across other industries, but particularly in a healthcare facility, departments are very interdependent um, on each other. Um, they, they often rely on, on each other to be able to accomplish the tasks for the day and accomplish the, the job for the day. And no one department can kind of stand on its own and you know support let's say a hospital structure, nursing is going to rely on uh, pharmacy, it's going to rely on dietary, it's going to re uh, rely on your environmental services. Um, so each department is really interdependent on the other departments. So it's important that we kind of foster this team atmosphere so that we make sure we're all working together as a team and no one's kind of working um, independently or kind of going rogue on their own. Um, and when we put this in the context of committees and um, what an important part committees play, particularly in change, which we talked about a couple of modules ago, um, as we start to bring together committees, we want to make sure that we can um, comprise that committee of different disciplines. So we want to make sure that we have nursing, um, EBS, lab, pharmacy. We want to make sure that we have all these broad disciplines represented on committees where appropriate uh, because that way if we have a champion within that discipline or several champions within that discipline, change is going to be accepted more easily. Now that doesn't mean that change is going to be made any easier. Change is still going to be hard. Um, but if we kind of have that champion for us out there, um, out on the floor, out on the front line, change is going to be accepted more easily from one of one of their peers. And a committee is a great way to do that. But as we talk about some benefits of committees, um, it's important to note and it's important, I think, for me to bring up and talk to you guys about are the disadvantages, you know, with, with everything there's advantage and disadvantages and committees are no different. Um, a couple of disadvantages that we may see in particular with committees, because we're trying to bring together this broad, um, diverse group of individuals, we're going to have a lot of different mindsets, a lot of different opinions. Um, and one thing that we kind of risk seeing here is something called groupthink, um, where we have one person who generally dominates the committee. Uh, so what I mean by that is, you know, You'll hear, if you haven't already, and you may hear this when you start out into your career um, in regards to committees, you know, if we have 10 people on a committee and these 10 people are agreeing all the time, then we have nine people on the committee that, that don't need to be there. Um, we shouldn't be agreeing wholeheartedly on everything all the time. It's healthy to have debate. Um, it's healthy to have that debate back and forth with each other. And what we're trying to come to is not... Um, one person kind of setting the setting and making the decisions, but we want some compromise. Um, we don't want weak compromise and weak decisions made, um, but we want that healthy level of debate. We want that healthy level of back and forth presenting of different opinions. Um, and what we're trying to reach is a consensus. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes committees, depending on how you structure them, can lead themselves. Uh, to some kind of level of group think if we're not careful. So when we talk about how we're going to start comprising our committee, this is probably one of the most important parts. Um, composition of your committee is just so very important. Um, one thing we want to make sure to watch out for um, and we may put ourselves in a little bit of danger of experiencing um, is that we don't put um, people on the committee that are of the same organizational rank. Uh, 
because it's likely if we have a, a lot of higher level executives on the same committee as maybe lower level managers, mid-level managers, it's likely those higher levels are going to dominate the committee. Um, they may often discourage people to speak up. Um, so we may kind of be extinguishing innovative thoughts and ideas before we can even get them to the forefront. So when we talk about composition of committee, one thing we want to kind of keep in the back of our mind and make sure that we're staying cognizant about is that the members of the committee are all of the general same organizational rank so that people feel comfortable expressing their opinions. Um, we don't necessarily have one position or one person in particular dominating the committee due to their rank and structure. I also want to note, you know, committees are a great way um, to kind of display your talent out there. Um, and they're a great opportunity for advancement for your career, particularly in healthcare. Um, you know, you want to be noticed. You want to be noted for your skills and your talents that you bring to the organization. And serving on committees and being active in committees is a great way to do that. Um, and your source of advancement up through the rank of the organization will come more likely, uh, more often than not, through committees and your involvement in those committees. So the role of the chair of the committee, if you ever find yourself um, chairing a committee, um, just, you know, make sure to remember this. That particular role, that chair, um, or, you know, if you do find yourself in that particular role, you are going to set the culture for the committee. Um, and people are going to be watching how you act, how you conduct yourself. Um, so we want to make sure that we're setting a role of compromise, that we're setting a role of um, open idea exchange and flexibility and not a culture of domination. Um, because if we have a, a chair that kind of dominates, what we're going to see, like I said earlier, is we're going to see the extinguishment of ideas, of creativity. Um, so we want to have, you know, a great diversity um, in our committees um, because there is going to be strength and diversity. So we want to be very cognizant um, if you are serving in the role of a chair of a committee, what what tone um, and what kind of culture you're, you're setting and displaying for those that are serving on the committee with you. I want to make sure, let me jump back here, um, Make sure to view this video. I'm not going to play it within the context of this particular lecture, but make sure to go back and watch it. Um, it's a funny way to kind of get the point across um, regarding running effective meetings. Now using, uh, we just went over brainstorming in meetings. Um, now using brainstorming in meetings is a great way to get um, as many ideas out as possible. And we often use this in practice um, in the hospital, particularly with uh, my background in quality improvement. This was our main form um, of meetings uh, regarding, you know, different experiments, different ideas that we were going to try within quality improvement. Uh, but brainstorming meetings are, are just a great way to kind of get ideas flushed out by the committee. Um, so what you do is you get all ideas out. Um, well, we want to make sure that we're careful not to criticize um, any ideas that are coming out because as soon as we start criticizing people people, committee members are going to start shutting down, not wanting to offer their ideas. And we may miss that, you know, that golden ticket idea that's out there that could really change the way that we deliver care to our patients or the way we deliver um, processes, uh, the way we have our, our business organization set up. So we, we don't want to limit ideas. We don't want to limit creativity. So we want to encourage our committee members to get all the ideas flushed out on the table. And then we can go, ahead, go through as a committee and as a group and start evaluating each of those ideas. 
Now, I want to caution against um, vote taking um, during during um, um, meetings such as this, um, because our goal with this is to reach a consensus. Now, I know oftentimes vote taking does happen within certain contexts and meetings, um, but in this case in particular, vote taking can kind of be a little detrimental um, because, you know, it goes back to Stephen Covey. We want to avoid that win lose mentality. You know, when I win, you lose. Um, what we don't want to do, and what oftentimes happens when we do this vote taking structure, is we start to pit, pit some against others. Um, so the last thing we want to do is for a committee member to go back to their department and say something to the effect of, well, I was outvoted or I was overruled. We want to make sure that we're coming to a consensus as a group. That's our whole goal of serving on these committees. Um, so it's better, you know, as often as we can avoid it or as much as we can avoid it to not do this, this formal voting structure, but rather come together as a committee and reach a, a consensus. Again, guys, make sure to go back. Um, funny little video, but gets the point across about serving on a team and, and the importance of serving on a team. Won't play it in the context for this lecture, but please make sure to go back and watch it. We covered uh, forming, storming, norming, and performing um, in an earlier lecture. We're going to end here. Um, I'm not going to add anything additional to this slide since we did already cover it. But guys, uh, we're going to end here with this particular lecture covering teams and committees. If you have any questions, please let me know.